sometime in September. Dear Brian, how do you like the splendid pleasure palace I have bequeathed you? The spacious chamber, the luxurious appointments, hook and closet, blackboard, imitation wood bookcase, massive many drawer desk that only a man of peculiarly acute sensibilities in his powers of perception could select and appreciate. And what of the collection of occult, oft-banned, mystical music used in ancient, unspoken rites for acts of rhythmic power? In such a place, at night, through the crystal pane and imported bamboo curtains, the hollow light of the moon is splintered, and one can hear the steady breathing of things our ancestors prayed we would never have to see in our world of electrical daylight. Protection or false security? I struggle in this high-rise hell against the numbered shadows who march mechanically through cafeteria, common room, television tube, lecture hall, shopping mall, office, courtyard, subway, bus, train, and bedroom. People are everywhere, pushing and shoving, trying to be a person. Only a very important one will do for most, so please don't block the aisle they choose to walk down. Well, here the rebel man will take his stand. Things are comfortable, I must admit, and if I didn't see stars in the sky, I might be very happy. Yes, the battle rages for both of us to be men. My time to make my mark grows short. Yours is coming, but there is no need for panic. Only patience. Great victories can be won. Great distances covered through a long series of small, often clumsy steps. So I try not to be afraid of playing the fool now if I don't have to be one secretly forever. I miss the record player. The radio reception out here is poor. Perhaps someday I'll be able to get a stereo cassette player and my troubles will be over. At least the silence will be broken. I think an aquarium would also be nice to start again. Little worlds in cages, tanks, or on tabletops have always fascinated me, like Ray Harryhausen. I like to set things up, manipulate, and smile if they work well, and people laugh or gasp. Yes, Toronto is an expensive city. Went to see Doc yesterday, intend to write a review of it for the campus paper. Admission was $2.50, and that was a cheap theater, the York up on Eglinton. It took an hour and a half to get there on the bus and subway. Especially on Sundays, I miss my car. It's a long way downtown, and the bus only runs hourly then. This place is deserted on weekends. Only 10% of the students live in residence. Yes, Toronto is a great place, but with a limited budget and an hour ride to get where the action is. Yorkville, Young Street, etc. Maybe I'll do a lot of reading now and go to the show next summer when I'm back in Hamilton and movies cost $2 and it takes 15 minutes to get there. Well, most of the fun in life is solving problems and I think answers can be found. Hope your schoolwork is going smoothly. You realize the consequences of failure, of course. There are a lot of aspiring actors here at York, as well as filmmakers, musicians, artists, dancers, and writers. I hope to get a chance to really know them. The one I talked to told me they audition grade 12s, so I'd begin to apply at Windsor, York, or anywhere else here is good. Expect competition. We both face fields where only one in a hundred is chosen. Keep moving, thinking, feeling. John.